Call our meeting to order. Um, Finance committee meeting on the 23rd of August, 2018. Uh, gentlemen, we'll get to you on public uh, comment. So otherwise, to our friends out there, we have no other public in attendance. Um, we're going to do. Uh, we're going to go to our public hearing. Uh, but before we do that, um, I think um, Cliff had the question of, are we going to deliberate on? any of these articles uh, today. Um, what's the, we can't deliberate on all of them just because we don't have all the information, but uh, what's uh, what's everybody's pleasure? We can, otherwise we're gonna do them all on the 6th of September. I would say let's try to get some get a I would consensus say. of what you think of. Well, I, I think we should take action if we can. You know, if, we're, if it's more or less settled amongst ourselves, there's not enough people yeah. absent that it would change. Okay. I know. Hi, Good to see you again. Is that fair? Okay. So um, I'm going to call the uh, public um, hearing to order. And uh, so we'll just take these in number. Here, do you want a paper copy, which might make it easier as you turn to, to flow through? I the newspaper. I was yeah. going to bring mine, but. Uh, so the first articles are the marijuana articles. I'd asked Andrew to have somebody here today, but um, anyway, we don't have them. Uh, my understanding is the planning board, if they have acted on this, because mm -hmm. they would hold a public hearing, we're supposed to do that on I believe it was Monday. Monday night. So we don't know the disposition. So I would, I would assume we would. Uh, anyway, any any comment amongst the committee on? The Article 1, Article 2, Article 3, Article 4, and Article 5, and Article, yeah, Article 5. I just wanted to, like I said, deliberate on, on some of the facts, not to go through the public hearing. Okay. Um, article 6. Well, um, why are we, we're waiting on planning board comment for 1 and 2. But three is not something, right? Oh, okay. Not actually sure what three is as it compares to one. It appears to be more definitions. Oh, this is just on public consumption. Right. Marijuana. Okay. And we don't have a motion. Uh, do we have a motion? We on can. Article three, you do have a motion. Yeah. Yeah, so, so I, I have read this one. I think this one makes a lot of okay. sense. It's a civil penalty, fine up to $200 for marijuana consumption in public. <laughs> Out of ignorance, let me just ask a question. Being this is my, really my first meeting, what are we looking at when we're looking at these, these, these warrants and these motions? Are we looking specifically at the fines? Are we looking at the entire uh, document? I mean, the whole picture. Yeah, the whole picture. Okay. Uh, what's what? the change? Is there a change? Because isn't the current, what's the current penalty? I mean, it's, it's already decriminalized. It's already a civil. Yeah, I think you get a. This is for being towards the school or something. So this is like being in town building or the school. Pub, any uh, public consumption. Yeah, yeah it's public consumption. No public consumption, no uh, clubs that, that sort of cater to consumption of marijuana. No, what was, there was another one. Um, Right, so so Article Three is just about the public consumption. Well, I think what you're thinking of is that there's a fee or a fine process in place for possession, and that's when it was decriminalized, and that's like a hundred dollar fine. This is for use, okay, in public. Okay. And the issue is, you know, it says here by adding a new chapter, Article One, uh, public consumption. There's just nothing prescribing what those things, uh, you know, what the penalties would be. So without this, everybody's got to go through probably a criminal proceeding. That makes sense. And, and does it take, in a similar way that with the tax, we're taking a percentage to go back to substance abuse, when we raise money through these funds, through mm -hmm. these monies, are we also able to do that as well? I don't know where that comes into. That's one of the things I wanted to talk about because I've been in a few meetings going to the end. <laughs> All right. Let's um, since we don't have anybody to answer specifically these questions, 
uh, right now. Let's let's just cycle through the articles, close the public hearing, and then go back and okay. have a discussion. Okay. So, um, Article Four, Article Five, Article Six, Article Seven, Article Eight. Uh, David, thank you very much for coming. Um, would you just um, take a few minutes and walk us through uh, what the thinking is and what your schedule is and answer any questions that the committee might have? Yeah, you want me on mic? Or? Yeah, I think it would be good just so that we capture you for pos posterity. Yes. All right, well, thank you, everybody. Um, the thinking on this is all based on our unfortunate incident we had this winter. Um, January 4th, when the, fo the existing force main had ruptured. Um, we do have the um, report from the um, forensic reports and from the engineering firm um, that states, and I, I did bring executive summaries with me um, if we want. Um, that states that the um, the cause of the uh, failure was due to um, bad weld, bad seams, bad welds, um, and what that does is sorry, no please, oh. um, what that does is just opens your eyes to say, well, there's a potential for something else to possibly go wrong. That the report actually specifically says that this force main, that's, the existing force main, should not be used except in an emergency, which that's all we're using it for anyways. So to go forward. Um, so it's not under daily use today? Not, not, not the 16 inch, no. Oh. It's ready and subject to be used, but it's just gonna be used in case of an emergency right now. An emergency like something like this happening with the other force mate? With the other force mate or a, you get a large storm, another flood, flood situation where you have to run more than one pump. Got it. Um, so we're looking to take and uh, move forward with the design and OPM services. Um, that's what the request is for the 2.5 million um, for those services. Okay, I have a question. Yep. So now the good news is we know what happened and that way we can design, build to make sure that we can potentially avoid that in the future. That's Absolutely. Why we're putting a new force main. Yes. And the uh, executive summary, you have copies of those? I do. Okay. Yeah, I do. And, and the thinking going along, talking with um, consultants and everything else is, why do this on, why do just one project? If we're gonna, we already have a bunch of projects slated and approved through capital and everything for the next couple of years going out. Let's go down roadways and paths that we're already replacing stuff on and install the force main at the same time. It could drastically change the prices, could lower them significantly by mobilization costs alone. Could be working interdepartmental. Yeah, we're, we're talking oh, yeah. water, sewer, and DPW, all at once, yeah. get in there, get it done. Um, then the, You're talking about changing the route of the force main. Absolutely, oh yeah, absolutely. Right. Um, and I didn't get into that yet, but uh, it seems very crazy to go down that same route again where all the power for the whole island sits. My thoughts, and I did I have a couple of bigger maps to show, is to get out of town a different direction totally different direction um, and in the meantime going down all these different roads being able to take and repair infrastructure that's already at its useful life and um, in other means one one of the routes actually takes and incorporates an area in the my common needs area that needs to be sewered to go down through a route like that and install a, a force main for that area at the same time just right nearby yeah um, so I'm, I'm trying to think a little outside the box, but get it all done at, at one in shot. And I've already had um, a lot of conversations with Mark and uh, Rob at the DPW. And as we go down the road, we won't leave anything unturned. If I may add to Dave, as, a, as your rep on Capcom, this is one thing that we've been mentioning each and every time we have an opportunity to, to make sure if we're gonna be opening up a new route that we clue in all of the departments of the town plus and I think it would be prudent that we raise the banner and the upper hand and even engage with Engrid 
um, who may not in turn sometimes do that be helpful for us as a community I think we should be the, the yeah. bigger of the two uh, some of the reasons we're sitting here or we took so long to get to a solution this winter is because of unknowns from Engrid what they were doing in our neighborhood collectively in our neighborhood and um, I'd like to think we could I know David will uh, be the bigger of the two and the uh, and Engrid and Verizon and Comcast we've you know it's it's time to start this planning now because um, we know the infrastructure and some of the other parts of the town for those different so when we go we tell them we're doing these roads at such and such a year or date they have to have their work done and after that is a five year or a longer moratorium that the town can establish you can't dig the road up unless something major happens but um, it's, it's just trying to think ahead and working with all the departments and, and with Brian's team and everyone we're all sitting at the same table all the time now talking which is it's really good. And you may, on, on that end, that there is rules and regs within the town uh, charter that allow people to open roads even after a moratorium. And it's clear, clearly written on how they can and why they can. And it, for the most part, falls under DPW that he can allow. And a lot of that has to do with infrared seaming and patching of roads. There are a lot of uh, the processes now they go forward um we're currently under the rewriting the entire set of sewer regulations now and some of the requirements for sewer are going to change as the right now the resident or the homeowner owns to the center of the sewer main going forward anytime we do a sewer construction project the town's going to put six inch laterals to the edge of the road and then they're going to that's going to be who's in the road the town we're not going to have 30 different contractors digging up the roads mm -hmm. uh, that's the goal it's still got a long ways to go but that's our goal. Mm. Enforcement of that is key. Oh, it's hard. It's, hard it's really tough. So isn't it maybe true that, I mean, the National Grid has a, a plan, a philosophy. It's not that we're not working together. It's probably that their plan's just different than our plan. Like they might be going down Surfside Road. And we're not ready to go down Surfside Road, yeah. but they have a two-year plan which says they're going to start and they can't stop. Yeah, we're taking and we've been in constant sitting that sit downs with National Grid um, for, for, to provide new power from the Candle Street station to Pulpus. That's where their concerns are. And they want to go down a lot of roads in the core district, Mulberry, Union, Fayette, Orange, back all the way down Pleasant Street. However, some of the structures they want to put in the ground are as half the size of this room. And once they put their structure in the ground, as we found out on South Beach Street or North Beach, we can't go in and do any repairs after. So we've been, we have been in close conversation with National Grid about all of this. Um, I even gave them an out-of-the-box thing, go to the town pier and drill over to Montemoy, and then you're there. You're already over in yeah. that area. They said, oh, it'll take a year for permits. Oh, well. We, there's no way the town can get everything we need to do in, in the, the time frame that they can move. Right. It's, it's right. impossible. They want to start, so they originally wanted to start work this September. Right. Um, is it also in your report, the sewer report with the wells and everything else, did we get all these reports with these cameras that were disappearing into sewer holes? And oh, yeah. Well, the, uh, the entire full length of the 16-inch force main was CCTV'd from the plant all the way to C Street to the front door. And what we did is anytime we even saw any kind of discrepancy in the pipe, dent, nick, deformity, we dug it up, cut it out, and replaced it. Is what we, even if it wasn't leaking, we cut it out of the way and replaced it in case those areas in concrete. Um, the, the report says the pipe can be used, but they prefer it to be used in emergency situations, which is perfectly fine by me. Um, the pump station isn't even online yet. That's hopefully going to happen in the next couple of weeks. So, if I may, please. Uh, did they give a life expectancy of the? The existing after it was repaired, they uh, they didn't get into a life expectancy, but the, their recommendations were to proceed with design and replacement. So, so we're assuming that the engineering firm that will work with us will provide that, so that we'll know yeah. how many years yeah. down the road we have to put it into a capital budget. Yeah, the um, the the existing twenty inch that's there now is not the same material. It's ductile line, which is a cement line much more robust mm -hmm. um, there's still a couple of areas um, we had a few sections tested during the force main break that the reason this 20 wasn't connected during the whole storm was we were gonna camera it and inspect it we didn't get that opportunity so now we put it back online 
and ultimately if we go to the 16 for a time being so we can expect the 20 or if we get a new one yeah. then we can inspect the 20. and that's the line that heads north of yeah it goes up over chicken hill yeah. in uh, new lane and david again i don't know how many years after the future the, the the new line actually gets installed do you end up with three lines or do you is the 16 inch sort of retired and or it gets cut because of the routes you take that's the 16 inch would ultimately be and it's in preliminary discussions that we've talked with um there is a possibility of even renting or lease or sell that force main to national grid yeah, and let them put it. let them pull conduits in that and use that same route and they don't have to dig up anything yeah. it's it's an option that we've mentioned to them and again they looked at me like i was funny looking when the, when i mentioned it but it's <laughs> something thinking out of the box but why not it's already in the ground they could they might not be able to pull 12 five inch conduits they want to do they might be able to get three or four but they'll get power to Montemoy or Pulpus that they want. How important is that main as a, an emergency vehicle? The, with the old station the way it was before the upgrade, it was very important. We used the second force main during all major storms. The new station is designed with much better pumps, so we shouldn't have to go with three pumps. We should only be able to run one or two. As, as, as much of a miracle as it sounds, we ran only one pump the entire summer at C Street on a bypass system. The pump that's there is a pretty amazing pump, and it survived the whole summer in just one pump. So we had to derag it three times a day, but um, it's uh, it, we can run on one. We handled a couple of big flooding events this summer. Um, we've the, we handled the storms itself over the winter with one pump. It can run on one, but the station's going to be fully capable to have. It's going to be a four pump system with true standbys. So, so when would the work um, get underway? I believe the way we want to do the design and the OPM stuff, as soon as we could get um, the funding and everything in place, would be to go right out okay. um, as soon as we could. For We have to get an OPM first and then go into the design with the engineer for the. Mm -hmm. And I would, I tell you, I would, you know, maybe put it on a fast track, but I would like to see the shovel on the ground in less than, less than two years. But. And Brian, you're going to borrow from the uh, Clean Water Trust? Uh, we're going to, we... Um He's an insurer is actually working on the preliminary application to get us hopefully on the intended use plan. The intent would be to go through the application process um, with the hope of getting design is not eligible for it. Okay. So it would be construction and construction services under an OPM agreement are also eligible for it. So the, the goal would be to get those under uh, mm -hmm. SRF. But um, this is. The way the process works is the applications are due on they're due tomorrow actually and then um they meet they rank all the projects and we end up and if we get on the intended use plan we have till june 30th of next year to finalize the borrowings to to continue to proceed so the intent of asking for the design now is to get ready for the april town meeting with the um with any construction costs necessary if we hit the intended use plan so that we can begin, mm -hmm. um, we can actually mm -hmm. start to um, begin that second phase and of the project. And the engineers, you think, will have a, their design work done time for April town meeting? We're going to tell them they have, oh, I have believe, a cost yeah. design done by then. I believe so. Absolutely. Well, they have learning curve. It's minimal because I've been involved. Yeah, I mean, yes. more than yeah, likely. Engineers. Yeah, I mean, more than likely. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> more than likely, it's probably going to be one of the firms that's day. already working with us anyway. Yeah. So it'll be the you know Fair enough day. been in, yeah. intimately involved with C Street anyway. So it yeah. should be um, it yeah. should be good. Okay. Well, I, I looked up some old paperwork <clears throat> from years ago from you know different meetings from the sewer and all the rest of it. When we talked about flow projections and considering we had 40 B's going in, we have massive building. Do we have these flow projections? What does that future look like for the solar system? I mean, um, obviously, I'm not doing, there's so much information going on. We, yeah. No, I. What, what are we doing for the? Yeah. Uh, when can it stop? Or how much can we pump? Mm -hmm. Well, right now, to. Um it's been a dry season. We've, we've been kind of lucky there, so our flow is a little bit down. But as we reported again last night at the selectmen's meeting, that conservation effort that we put out for when the force main ruptured has is still working. And I, it's a, remarkable. And even Mark's saying that they've had very few 4 million gallon days. 
we're, we're receiving just under two or just at two million gallons. We're permitted for four million gallons a day. The problem that we can treat it, some of the problem is we can't get it to us right now. Is, and you know the water company is saying to say they can get it out of the ground, but getting it there is an issue. Okay, so I mean, we, we, I think I thought in June they had a record four or five million gallons in a day. For the it's, first time. This year, I think, but um, think. they had numbers over last year, I think close to six million a day. It, but so, how are we handling if our capacity is only four million? Can we can handle more than four million? Well, we, I can, we, we're permitted to do four million a day. Huh. Right now, we're doing just under two or just at two. When it rains, we go to about 2.2, 2.3. Um, it was a few years ago, we had one of those like five inch rainstorms. That was the only time I ever saw the plant go over three million. But it's II. It's, it's inflow infiltration that's affecting everything in that whole, still in the Brant Point area, we're still having issues. So if we can get rid of, every time we do a sewer project, we're eliminating hundreds of thousands of gallons of II. So our flow is staying right about where it is because flows are increasing, no doubt. Um, but the plant can still handle another two million gallons. So it can't, so what is the maximum it can handle? Not, not what we're permitted for, what do you think it can handle? It's designed for 7.7 .7 max okay. per day. I have seen numbers coming in at over 12 million gallons instantaneous for three hours at a time, and we've still been able to treat it. That's during incredible rainstorms. Um, and uh, I actually think Noah was working with us the one year we had the major, major storm that we had. We had 12 million gallons coming in for over three and a half hours. Where did we um, start our end um, with? I know we did uh, phase one downtown, is up by Zero Main Street, and different places where there was a lot of infiltration. Do we stop to say phase two or the five phases? What, where, are we, where are we at? They went to all the way to phase three C or whatever, but they've only completed up, completed up to phase two B. The last phase was from Eastern Street into town. It included some of Fair Street, Quint Street. Um, the targeted areas that we have coming up that we have approved funding for is Wash, uh, Westchester, North Liberty, Delaney, where we have we know we have some very significant flows. We're probably talking upwards of 500,000 gallons a day in II in those areas. That's all slated to be fixed. All right, so we voted a lot of this stuff in a long time ago. We just haven't a long, long time ago. met there. We have, and, and every project we do removes II. Right. Um, I mean, you smoked how many times? Three or four yeah. smoke tester on that? Yeah. And that's one thing we had. We now have the tools, which we didn't have in the past. We have the smoker, we have the camera truck now, and we took in uh, when we smoked after the force main break. We found nine homes that had major issues that we actually had to go in and either plug or get the people to plug them themselves, and it, it really helped. It took a lot of flooding out of the lines. Does your department have enough resources to make all of nope. this happen? <laughs> I'll say no forever, but. <laughs> I know Brian's going to go on. Because uh, um, these, are, these are important and ambitious yeah. projects, yeah. right? And they're critical to yeah. the town. But it, we can vote and support them with the dollars. But if we don't have enough manpower and thinking capacity yeah. to execute them, I'm concerned. Yeah, right now we have three openings for operators. Um, we have had some trouble filling the positions. And usually the first question they ask is housing. Do you have housing? We have housing at the plant. We built years ago for that. We have, it's only four duplexes, they're full. Two of them are filled with DPW employees right now. Um, I also have a position open for an engineer. Um, that's, go, that's going out for posting next week, I think. If it's already funded. Um, I'm sure the engineer's question is gonna be, do you have housing? Uh, at this time, we don't. Um, I also had just recently, I'm just recently with my chief operator. He's actually coming to the police station to take and do their IT. So. We'll hire from within in the chief's position, but I hope to have some help on pretty soon. And with Brian's help over the last few years, we have a corral of engineering firms that have been extremely helpful and, I mean, top-notch firms. That So the thinking power is there. Um, when we get an in-house engineer, we'll be able to take and defer some of those costs. But um, right now I have to get an in find an engineer. That's going to be my next step. So, so you think, unlike the water company, that over the last 10 years they were able to fill vacancies with technology and innovate, it's, that's not the same. We don't have the same ability to do that. That's sort of like more than manpower. Some, it's some, it is some technology, but it's more manpower. Um, every day, even in the plant that was installed in 2008, every day something breaks. Yeah. And it takes two or three guys to, for example, this morning in Wisconsin, we had to pull three of the pumps out there for rags. 
took three guys to go and do that. Um, so this, the manpower is definitely key, but we do have some technology now that helps. Um, and I have had the great support from the town administration and from you folks to get where we're going. Um, and all we can do is keep trying. I mean, it's we can just keep fixing what we got. Great. Anything else? David, I think you're up on the next one as well. <laughs> I am. C Street. C Street. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, C Street Pump Station, as we all know, originally built in the 1800s. Um, the, the major first function was in 1920. Um, the force main that ruptured was 1929. Um, during the renovation, and we completely gutted the building from inside to out, and then we completely gut, gutted the building around the foundation to put in structural flood walls um, to help, one, protect the structure, but two, to raise our flood level to within the new FEMA maps. Um, we found, as soon as we started pulling down some of the walls and the ceiling coverings, um, some significant rot that was non undetected during the initial analysis. Um, and what that has done is it pushed the project out. We were, we were supposed to be online in July. We're about four months, three, three and a half months out before we actually will be completed. So a good portion of the costs are for the extra construction that we found that we had to do. Um, a couple of additions that during the design we found um, were needed and then the extra cost for the contractors is what it is. Um, Something I did not never want to do to come back and ask for more, but it, that is the most that's our primary pump station. And if we neglect now, we're definitely going to pay in the future. So, what was the original um, uh, contract for? There's been um, uh, or total if you've had multiple contracts. There's been numerous for appropriations over the years. There was two three million dollar appropriations, and then the last one was six five one five sixty five sixty or whatever like that. So we're just about six five, and then this is the, the winter weather. The force main break and stuff has pushed this over, and it was unforeseen. And I, uh, like I said I didn't want to be here asking for more, but um, was some of it relevant to the Mansard roof where you had the roof joists may have been compromised by rot, and you had a slate roof above it, which. Yeah, years and years ago, the slate, the roof was all slate, and it was excess weight. And what had it's a strict, it's a brick structure, and over the years, bricks get wet and swell and crack. Yeah. I don't know if anyone's been down there recently, but the company that's been down there, they've repointed the entire building. Um, it with the, good. It's, it, it really looks. I, I, I talked to the masons this morning. It's an unbelievable job. They really, the building looks new, as, as old as it is. Yeah. Brand new roof. The roof had been leaking for years in spots we couldn't see. Mm -hmm. Um, so that's what triggered it, and it was it was actually hem fur that was rotted, which was wow, surprising. Mm -hmm. It's those hybrids, yeah. Other trees. Anything on this, guys? Gals? Okay. David, thanks. Thank you. If you have a couple of copies of the executive summary, that would, if you could leave them, that would be great. All right. Uh, Brian, down here. Speechless. Speechless today. How many times are we going to rebuild this thing? I don't know. Hopefully not many more. Um, so we put out to bid um, a little while ago the, to the repair the, um, the floating docks, Thank the you. floating pier system, and, and do dredging to start to do first and resetting of the pylons and the bids came in at 2.6 million which were about one about 1.5 million dollars more than we have estimated roughly thereabouts um, because there's a very limited window of time to do the dredging and the uh, removal and resetting of the pylons we awarded the base bid only, which is only one portion of the floating dock would be repaired. And then the rest of it, we would be coming back to town meeting because there's no, when we actually reassemble and put the floating docks in is not limited by the permit. The only part that's limited by the permit is the dredging and the pylon work. So we need to get that going. So we had, um, we've, we 
have some money from insurance coming. We have um, about, there's about $846,000 that we had um, cobbled together between articles and insurance, and then there's waterways improvement money, which is authorized every year. So we're able to award the first piece. Uh, the second piece, which is the other two pieces of the floating pier, we actually have to put back out to bid because we rejected those as alternates because we didn't have the funding for them. And we couldn't sign the total contract unless we had funding for the entire contract. So this article will provide supplemental funding so that we can fix the entire piece of it. There is, there has been internal discussions about including in this design money to fix the end of the pier to hopefully prevent um, future degradation of that, pier, that section of the pier. I don't know if whether we've settled on that yet or not. I think some of it depends on where free cash comes in, which is supposed to be done before town meeting. So this is a number that we more than likely will need to have a, a technical amendment on the floor um, before town meeting because there's still some questions about how we're, what we're exactly going to do and everything there. So, but essentially, is to fix all of the damage from the, the winter storms. And is it fair, Brian, to say that part of well, pointing at this pier mm -hmm. deflects water and blows it into the town pier and and shouldn't we also think about if there's any way to thwart that? Uh, I think that would be part of the discussion. Good. Yes. So, so that's like you're, our neighbor hurting ourselves. <laughs> so if our neighbor doesn't change, we're going to get hurt continually. Potentially, yes. So I think that's important. <clears throat> Do we ever get reimbursed? I know always state and federal government always talk about you know these storms and when they get money and. And we never seem to, maybe I'm wrong. Okay. Well, the most recent storms, we didn't actually qualify. Um, they weren't, the storms individually didn't qualify for the federal disaster declarations. Um, so we pursued, a, and even if they had, we are obligated to pursue a claim with our insurance before FEMA will step in. Um, if there is a declaration and we have insurance coverage, FEMA will pay 75% of any of the deductibles we have attached to the insurance. Um, we were actually very lucky um, for the last two years, and hopefully it continues into the future, we've been able to procure insurance coverage on the pier, um, which is how we able to secure the estimate originally to fix that piece was $395,000 on the floating pier and our floating docks, and we actually received just about probably close to 400,000 in insurance recovery. The majority of it went there. There was some of it went to the airport too and some of it went to Jetty's Beach for the damage to the awnings. But the majority of that $400,000 recovery was for um, for the damage to the pier. So um, every every storm is a different, is its own individual event when we call it for FEMA and they all have their individuals right here. County and then Commonwealth threshold. So um, can you talk about deliberation? Can we talk about putting a breakwater just piece in front of the whole thing? We There's have, but there's, from what I understand, there's substantial permitting that needs to be done to be doing all of that. And that, don't quote me, this is what people have said, is that could be anywhere from one to five years before we can get all the necessary permits in place to do that. So along with repair, there's discussions about what we can do as we begin that phase of the enhancements, I guess, to continue to protect it. So which is why there's been internal discussions about whether we want to include any design money to begin the design phases of what the other repairs would have to look like so that we can begin the process to secure permits to be able to get it done. But though one would think that we may, as a town, may have to self-fund our losses in the future because the insurance company may say enough is enough. We told you once yeah. or twice, right? Uh, well, fortunately, the only, this is the first claim that we've actually had on good. the pier, which is very, we're thankful for. Yeah. Um, and I will say that even though the, the last year in terms of storms and damage was, you know, one of the extremely significant to the insurance companies, they seem to have um, it. weathered it okay, I guess, no pun intended. And during all of our renewal discussions, there was not talk of removing the pier from, or the ability to cover it from, the, from, the, um, from any of the coverage. So we were fortunate through that. So. So what's the number that goes in the green or the red box? Um, at this point, it's still TBD because we're going to have to put the other pieces out to bid again with a with a structured goal of having them open before town meeting so that we can have the number for town meeting. 
So, so I'm get get us get us into a box less than x more than y. <laughs> More than 1.5, but less than three. That's fair. Okay. I, I mean, I, I honestly, I, I don't know, to be honest. No, I, but I, um, you know, yeah. I mean, if you look at it from what the bid was to what we awarded, you're talking about 1.4, 1.5 million dollar gap. Uh, if we add any additional design cost in there, I mean, I don't. It, so it's somewhere between 1.4 and 3 million would be my guess. And I'm assuming whoever is bidding on this uh, is it uh, ACM, AGM, AGM, probably one. Uh, oh, coastal, so. Mohawk, AGM, and there was one other bidder yeah. on the other one. Yeah. I would assume they, somebody's got AGM, I would suspect, has got other work going on. They're all very busy right yeah. now, I know that. Don't have work with me? No, here. Oh, here, here yeah. Because that's... Yeah. Well, Coastal was the low bidder on, on base bid one, on just the base mm -hmm. bid, so that who was who the selectman authorized us to enter into the contract yeah. with, yeah. because then we didn't have a choice unless we just decide to reject them all and start over. Okay. Anything else? Okay. Noah, thank you for coming. Happy to be here. How's Tito Barrow North? Tito Barrow North. <laughs> We're hustling. Okay, so Noah Carberg, Assistant Airport Manager. How about that? I'll pick you up. This one's on. Okay. So, if you don't mind, I'd like to take a step back and talk generically about 11 and 12 and why yeah. we're going after these funds now. <coughs> the Omnibus Funding Bill has allocated, at the federal level, it's allocated an additional billion dollars to airport infrastructure with a specific call out for smaller airports, specifically commercial small hub and non-hub primary airports, of which Nantucket is one. So an additional billion dollars. Um, it recently came out with some interpretation in the Federal Register about how exactly that will be selected, the timelines for that, and they are stringent. The first deadline has already passed. The second deadline is in October to basically have permitted, planned, shovel ready, and borrowing initiated for projects. So that's why we came in on this at special town meeting uh, instead of through the normal ATM process. Uh, specifically for Article 11, Taxiway Echo is our main our main air carrier taxiway, 6,300 feet long. It parallels runway 624, which is our main runway and our instrument runway. It's where the large air carrier and the large corporate jets use. It's our only parallel taxiway for getting traffic on and off of that runway. It was built in the 80s. It's reached the end of its serviceable life. We've completed two small-scale repairs on it already at 10,000 a piece. We're already planning on having to do a couple more of those. The timing with the omnibus um, with this project, which actually is on our capital improvement plan already in the next five-year time frame, we're just advancing it up through that process. Not only is it beginning to show signs of failing, it'll bear an increased maintenance cost that will just accelerate geometrically over the next few years, but we've also received word in the industry, I don't know how many people follow the air craft upgaging trends, but JetBlue is going to start retiring their E-190 fleet in 2020 or 2022 with a full phase and by 2025 of what has recently been branded the Airbus 220, which is, again, it's a small degree bigger than the E-190, that taxiway when it was built in the 80s was probably designed around the Saab 340, which is 40 or 50,000 pounds instead of 115,000. So this kind of where is expected. The project scale has moved up from this news. I'm not a civil engineer, so don't quote me on the actual pavement specifications. But it was originally spec to be a rehabilitation project, a mill and overlay with um, the kind of deterioration that we've seen, the kind of future planning we're looking at the Airbus 220, it's moved into a full depth reconstruction. 
and it crosses the weight threshold looking ahead to the Airbus 220 where it requires a stabilized sub base and that's really that's the reason for the big cost escalations so from our you go estimates down a few years just yeah pure Correct. on the scan it. and I think I think that's good information on taxiway echo I'm happy to answer further questions with my limits on civil engineering of course is there any probability that we wouldn't get the funds from the Fed? We believe we would get some kind of funding if we do not get the, uh, the FAA calls it the unicorn money. If we don't get the unicorn money, the idea is that the airports that had discretionary projects in line will get the unicorn money, which will open us up for FAA discretionary money in the following year. Again, it's 90% uh, reimbursed, the project cost is 90% reimbursed by the FAA, 5% by MassDOT. We will likely be petitioning MassDOT to fund an additional 2.5%, given that our sponsor share is still, still $1 million. Um, it's not unheard of, it happens, it's not the rarity, but we, it's a project we won't go forward with without funding. We have to have the affirmative at the special. Yeah, we would need the authorization because yeah. they would need to be able so to. So there's no downside? No. Um, while we're upgrading for the for the weight, are they upgrading for maybe the width of widening the taxiways? Because those C-17s had a little bit of a problem mm -hmm. driving around. So we're not widening the stub taxiways at this time, but we are redoing the fillet geometry for, um, for the spec aircraft, for the A-2. Airbus 220. And there's no lengthening, it's just... No lengthening. The, uh, the net pavement impact, there's a little... Just a over the course of the project, there's two acres of additional pavement and we're reducing by about the same amount. I think, Cliff, specifically, I think there's a little bit taken out of the run-ups and a little bit added onto Alpha through Delta on the fillets. So we're not having to maintain more macadam or asphalt after the project's done? No, more or less the same so, footprint, give or take. Yeah. Thank you. Anything else? No. Okay. The map came in handy, did yeah. <laughs> uh, How about your security project? Okay, so on the terminal side of the operation, and actually that's not entirely correct, it includes general aviation as well. Our security, it's mostly a security infrastructure project. The uh, cabling, the servers, and the CCTV cameras, the badge hardware and keypads that you see on the door, those are also at the end of their serviceable life. They're about seven to 10 years old, which in IT terms is ancient. That's also beginning to fail, which you know, we're throwing money at it now. We only want to throw so much more money at it. With the Omnibus funding, this is a project that we believe we can get in line and we will receive Omnibus funding for. Um, it's pretty encompassing. The background information that I'd like to give is probably 10 years ago, using rough numbers of our commercial employments, Probably 60% went through the non-secure doors, or 70% went through the non-secure doors, 30% went through TSA security, or the precursor of TSA security. That's flipped now, about 80% of our employments go through TSA security doors and rooms and boarding, and the smaller portion goes out non-secure on the air taxis. When you're involving secure commercial flights, you have much more rigorous safety and security standards. So the access control on doors, more access control, more doors, more areas covered by CCTV. So it's a change that's been happening gradually. And one of the things we've identified in this project, when the, um, I believe when the secure, when the terminal was expanded in 2000, and eight, that boarding room is spec to hold two secure airlines. We now have five, and we have just many more people, much more IT, the conduit spacing that goes there isn't adequate. So there's a little bit of a facility IT backbone that goes along with this project also. So cabling and running of... Connected. Right, more conduit, more CAT6. Same reimbursement scheme? 
Same reimbursement scheme, except we would not be petitioning for the additional state sponsorship. And if you don't get the money, do you go forward with the project? No, we can't. We we can't go forward without funding for this project. Without federal funding for this project. Naivety asks this question: If we weren't capable of doing it, just because we, we didn't have the funds, is there any potential future liability if an incident happens where because we were deemed not secure enough? You know, the the far far outside risk is if we were unable to maintain our access control and CCTV systems for an extended amount of time, and we were unable to come back with basically the analog background, which meant actually putting people with eyes on doors for a certain period of time, um, we could lose our ability to provide commercial air service. The FAA could come in, FAA or TSA could come in and suspend or pull our um, Part 139 operating certificate. That's a, that's a okay. bit of a far-fetched scenario, but it's, but it's, but it's plausible. possible. Right. That's why I asked. Um, you that, know how much debt's rolling off their books this year? Off the top of my head, no. I don't know. I'd have to go back and look. You don't know the answer to that question? You know? Not in hard numbers. Nothing more than a little bit, but not a ton. So, <laughs> A little bit, but a ton technical term. A little bit, but not a ton. Um, are we are we fundamentally going to be adding to our debt service payments on? Well, we would fundamentally attempt to structure this like we always do and roll this as many times as I can mm -hmm. before we would and do it to add it at a favorable time frame, so that we would try to time the permanent borrowing when the most amount of their debt was rolling off so that it would have the least amount of increased impact to them. Um, yeah, but it's not always possible to do that, but that's what we attempted. We, yeah. we do work to do very quickly. Yeah. And the airport has also, though, has instituted a kind of an unwritten policy and procedure where they will ask town meeting authorization to transfer retained earnings into capital projects to pay off their borrowing per their dollars. They're what they normally would borrow if it's under a certain amount and they have the retained earnings. So we are kind of using the two, a two lane strategy where they're looking at using retained earnings at the end of projects to pay off their portion of the borrowings that are not covered by grants. Mm -hmm. And then rolling debt if interest rates are favorable enough to um, on the short term debt to a point where there's enough debt rolling off that the added permanent borrowing is not going to be a significant increase to what their debt service costs are. And so have you um, have you gotten with their financial person to run a sensitivity analysis if traf how much traffic has to turn down before they we, turn negative? We talk all the time about that. Mm -hmm. So they're so she's she's acute She's is that an answer yes, you do have run the sensitivity analysis or you just talk about it? <laughs> um, I don't personally run them, but I know that she's reviewing the numbers and the, and the economics and the, the data to make sure that they can continue to meet their obligations and what it would look like. Do I have to the, I don't personally do it all the time, but I do, I talk to her and she has been doing it or looking at it, so. So if we were to uh, come this winter, inquire when the airport comes to see a sensitivity analysis that they would be, in your opinion, prepared to have that discussion? I believe they could have that discussion. So you might convey that no. to them. Make a note. <laughs> <laughs> so noted. <laughs> Just in the interest. I mean, look, we all, yeah. you know, we nobody knows when no, I the, the beanstalk's going to stop growing, but it's going to stop growing, and, and, you know, we've had other... You know other challenges obviously absolutely and if there's a part of our economy that's got to be sensitive to the economy it's mm -hmm. it's yeah. the airport so great anything else great noah thanks very much you're welcome good thanks, job uh, brian uh when do we have prior year articles well so articles um Article 13, Mr. Chairman, is simply there's some leftover. You, you guys, if you want to 
Well, this is exciting. All right. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's some leftover money um, now that the air traffic control tower project has been closed out in the amount of 18980 It was from retained earnings. Um, and the vault room project is um, had some additional expenses necessary to complete the project or move forward with the project. So we'd simply be asking to transfer that from the uh, Article 13 into Article 12 for the vault room. And since it's retained earnings, we can transfer it for any lawful purpose. <laughs> Article 14 is actually still being, the motion is being reviewed by town council. Uh, essentially, there's about a $234,560 change here. Um, some of it relates to solid waste debt that was is considered taxable and was added to and in, not into the general fund as it was supposed to be. Um, the solid waste debt's also a, uh, a debt exclusion was passed. And then the largest part of this is all of the Nantucket Harbor Shimo money is was voted to be paid through the tax base, through the tax rate. We had interim notes with the Clean Water Trust, but the Clean Water Trust goes to market whenever they deem it most favorable, and they don't always ask communities if they're fully prepared to take on the debt that they're permanently borrowing until it's too late, like it was kind of for us. Uh, thankfully, we have a special town meeting, and some of this is also related to that. Um, borrowing, Article 15 is the same thing. The um, there's a change in the sewer debt structure because of the um, the borrowing from the state revolving fund relative to the upgrades to the Surfside Wastewater Treatment Plant. There's an $8.4 million SRF interim borrowing that they're actually now in September taking permanent, which means we begin to have payments in fiscal 19. And you have an, an amount for that, or uh, you will have an amount? I will have an amount. I believe the, the sewer is less than a hundred thousand dollar change. Okay. But Brian, the, these were expenditures that we're already making just on short term borrowings. <coughs> well this is the, the town has outstanding, is that correct or well we have interim notes with the, the trust that we haven't fully drawn down, but they're going and borrowing the full amount of those notes and then oh, so once they permanently borrow it I have principal and interest or in this case interest only in the first year payments. And that's what this is. And they can borrow whenever they deem the market conditions right for these large, the large note sales that they do. Okay. So and you, and you haven't necessarily borrowed the full amount? No, we haven't drawn down against the full amount from them yet at, at this point. Okay, any questions yep. further for Brian? We have asked him for a little bit more heads up than March or April of the year when we have a limited time to be able to do anything, so. Article 16, uh, Bruce Mandel is uh, not here. Uh, I've, he and I have been communicating. Um, he was not aware there was a public hearing. He had a medical appointment. Uh, he will be here on the 6th of September. <coughs> so anybody anybody have anything they want to say about 16? 16 or 15? Or fif 16. 15 was just the... Oh, sorry. The I, can't put up my glasses. I, I, Does, I, I am struck, Mr. Chairman, in, in Section 1, to find the purpose. Why is there so much... And I, I'm not really disagreeing with anything, but it reads more like propaganda than, <laughs> um, than a, the, you know, a regulation or a bylaw and all this sort of educational information about... Mm -hmm. and, I, and I agree with most of it, but it just seems like a weird way to compose the yeah. article. Right. It seems more like it would be suited for a handout. I mean, if we're banning some of these practices, just to find them and ban them. No, right. You don't need to tell everybody how that's no like a story. Another document that was rolled into this. Anyway, maybe yeah. it's not our call, but it just seems like we're well, um, Maybe our motion wouldn't have to include all of that. Yeah. If it was a positive motion, I mean, it would be a shame if there was any time to cover that. Yeah. Yeah. It'd be outdated as soon as it's over. Yeah. David, um, any impact on you guys uh, with plastics coming through the system? <laughs> well, yes, actually. The, uh, I just announced it at a supper's meeting two weeks ago. Apparently, there's a new uh, fad going on that they're flushing doggy waste bags. Oh, come on. And they've actually plugged the sewers up on the Cliff Road twice. <coughs> Goddamn dogs up there. So, it, <laughs> that's about the only. I mean, we see a lot of plastics and other items, mm -hmm. but the newest thing this year yeah. is plastic okay. dog waste bags. Oh, that's a lot. 
to plug an eight inch sewer main, it's a lot. <laughs> Yes, the good news is they're cleaning up after their animals. So. <laughs> you step in it. I, I, just, I, I don't know why they flush some stuff. They flush. Yeah. Okay. That was evident after four, four days. Little beads in, in like uh, the soaps and stuff. Now, you, you read that that goes into the ocean. Do you see that? We're not seeing a lot of it. We, I mean, in our screeners and our in our compact washers, we see all kinds of things. Dental floss is one of the biggest things we see. Again, I don't understand why people flush dental floss. Right. But um, mm -hmm. the only like thing the I think fertilizer that, regulations. We need a refresher course for adult humans on what should be flushed. Uh, I I think it's education. I think that's something going forward that once we can get enough people, uh, you know, education is going to be key for a lot of stuff. Mm -hmm. Okay. Was it true, or, do, or did Town Council have a problem with yeah, Article 16? They yeah. still do? Okay. That yeah. I guess my only question is, no one really answered, but the enforcement would be a manager's designee. So that's just kind of... I mean, I think that's... Uh, these are all questions for Bruce. Yeah, okay. uh, so. What was the Town Council's recommendation regarding this article? And did he help him, or he, obviously he didn't help him? I don't believe that. I, I don't know if um, the sponsor utilized the services of town council or not. I, I'm not sure. Um, sponsor there, were, there weren't any for this, I don't think. I think. No, the sponsor did not use town council, and town council's got a problem with some of the wording. Yes. Um, so. Um, I don't remember exactly which sections he has the problem with. Well, I think a lot of it is the broadness of defining plastic uh, and not setting up exemptions or so is he going to help him I don't know what he's going to do for past. I don't think town council at this stage will okay. help that he yeah. sponsor okay maybe for town you know, yeah. for annual. I mean I think it's have the discussion with Bruce see where he wants to go uh, okay. I think his intention is good uh, there's probably actually a fair degree of interest well, I mean, but this may just be you I mean, know, overly broad and if you are if you have a restaurant currently or if you're selling food to go currently you have to have your help per health department you have to be using recyclable stuff so it's not so some of this is not so different than that yeah the problem That's is segment of our nine percent of plastic is recycled worldwide and there's just not a market for the stuff anymore which is a that's one of the problems so anyway um anything else okay i'm going to close the public hearing um a pleasure of the committee do you want to uh, deal with a couple of these things right now i just wanted to talk about the um when it comes to the marijuana they don't uh, describe the marijuana, not exactly what they're trying to sell only because um, i've heard of one or more instances where uh, Know, they mass produce it's not just weed it's candy and all this stuff it ends up in a high school and kids are going it's the off. best way to ingest it cliff oh awesome and <laughs> i think they do describe that yeah, yeah i think so too yeah yeah, yeah. 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 products right yeah and what do they say where i missed it uh it's yeah it's marrow to manufacture it contains cannabis or an extract from cannabis or marijuana or an extract from cannabis or marijuana including concentrated forms of marijuana and products composed of marijuana and other ingredients that are intended for use or consumption including edible products beverages topical products oh, and oils and tinctures, tinctures. Huh? tinctures. tinctures. Well, okay well i just thought you know that was more of a line of medical you know they got oils and all that other stuff but yeah, you know, they, they, they went to a meeting, a uh, select meeting, they talked about they work on, a, at least the company that said they would be, I thought they said they work on to make candies and stuff like that, but I don't, I don't know what the press did for the things, but. And then we talked about the money, uh, we talked about all the money going to uh, substance abuse. abuse, and then I saw the Board of Selectmen fighting over whether it should be 50 grand or 25 grand, but then. Percent or thousand? No, oh, percent. You said thousands. It's twenty percent. It's fifty percent. Okay. Well, the lady said that three, four years. She thought we had that discussion here. We did, but yeah. I also. I, I, th I think if I can, I think that what you're talking about is what they're they're making a supplemental contribution, oh, and I think that it was yeah. permitting process. 
through the through the agreement that they okay. that they have. I believe that the twenty five or fifty thousand was a contribution from the licensee to substance abuse prevention. It isn't anything to do with what the the tax, the tax okay. and what the split was, which I believe was voted at the last ATM. So those are two different things. There, the licensee is pledging to make a contribution mm -hmm. from on their own okay. as part of the agreement that they came to with the town. And there was discussion about whether it would be fifty or twenty-five thousand. But the fifty percent of the revenues derived from the various taxes right. are earmarked for substance abuse. Fifty percent to the general fund, I yeah. assume. Mm -hmm. And with the idea that um, you know, if there was a desire to move it up, you could and the concern that moving it down would be potentially hard to do because we don't know how much money who's going to signs that mix is that town meeting or of course i think we decided at town meeting that it'd be 50 i believe it was fit the, when we created the yeah it was i believe yeah. at town meeting I think it was it started, determined to be right. 50 50. but did we decide like sometimes uh we'll say a minimum of 50 percent and then it can be adjusted by some other no, it's town. I mean, town to change that town meeting would have to go back and do it. What about fines collected through this, the civil penalties? Well, most civil penalty fines go strictly to the general fund, unless otherwise provided by for statute. And I'm not, I'd have to go through and read all of these CMRs, but I don't know that they are allowed to be directed anywhere else. They open up a can of worms then with every, every. Well, then you would you would certainly open the can of worms that for every fine we could yeah, direct exactly. it somewhere else. So yeah. any any revenue that's not specifically provided to go somewhere other than the general fund goes to the general fund mm -hmm. by statute, unless it meets a long be threshold big, criteria. Yeah, I don't no pun it. intended. Pot of money. Yeah, I get it. <laughs> I just didn't know if it was included in the money yeah. piece of it. But I'll I'll verify and double check whether it can go anywhere else and whether we want to have that discussion. But typically those would go to the general fund. So was that confusing? What did, did they project the amount they would collect in the tax at the meeting, one of the meetings? Uh, I don't, have not been involved in any actual discussions about the projections of the tax. I think that the individual licensee may have given what they project their sales are going to be, but I don't know that we've actually, I have not been, I haven't seen it. I know that there's been discussions about it, but I think too, it's it's a very new industry. So I think it's gonna be able to take a little bit of time to get any baseline to, to do those types of projections on. I think it's anecdotal. Matt Fee probably has the best numbers because he's got friends out in Colorado who run these businesses. The number of licensees is limited to 20% of the number of liquor stores there are in the island? Uh, that is what one of the articles would do, yes. Wouldn't that be only one or two? There's only actual five year-round licenses in one. No, I believe it's all, it, it's not, no. Yeah, it's all year-round. Yeah, the number of year-round licenses. I thought we were limiting, we limited it to two. Okay. No. I don't remember that. 26 or 18 targets in the end? Maybe 20 percent of five. So, so it's going to be it might two be or three. three. I think I think they're only two. I think it's two, two. Um, I mean, this this says you're limiting it to 20 percent, and if that's not a whole number, then you round up to the next right. number. So I think it might be. But it is a, it is of year round right. licenses. But what is what is? I mean, this came from the select board. Has anybody heard what the what the point is of doing that? Listen, I think it's going to be very difficult for two places to make money here doing this. I think you're right. I think their population is too small on a year-round well, basis and, and, for and two the, places the to make The permitting is crazy. On this. The zoning yes. that we've allowed for it is tiny. Yes. The land is very expensive. I mean, what's the purpose of this? And it's hard to procure it here and store it and protect it and all the things that are challenging in the mainland are more challenging here because you have federal waters and airspace between us I think and the, the state, as far as I understand, the state has made whatever accommodations they're going to make for the water and air piece. I think that's done. I don't know specifically what they are. Hmm. But one of these places is nearly finished, the one on Amelia Drive. The medical one, but retail's like a completely different thing. 
but we haven't awarded any retail permits yet. Because we're waiting, in part, because we're waiting on these things. Right. Yeah, but as soon as the as soon as this goes, I think the Amelia Drive. They're going to request for retail. Yes. For both licenses. I mean, one of these licensees actually contacted Habitat. I don't know if they we wanted to do like a charitable fundraising thing in partnership with them. I didn't, re I didn't return the phone call. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not sure that's really the the best impression I want I want to give on yeah, They are for profit. What's the formula that the town uses to determine the number of year round liquor licenses? Population. Oh God. <laughs> Which is from about the state of it. Yeah. So is it based on year-round population, or is it based just based on year-round? No, it's just based on population. That's why I think in the summertime you can have 11 more licenses, temporary ones, because there's more people. Seasonal licenses. Okay. Um, so, that's marijuana. I assume we're going to hold that over and see if we can get Andrew to, or see what the planning board says on a couple of them. Yeah. I mean, this one's just from the board of selectmen. They even sent somebody to describe to us what the reason is that we want. I mean, Libby will be back by then. Yeah, Tom Andrew will be back uh, for the 6th. Yeah. The meeting on the 6th. Um, and anybody have an opinion on 6 and 7? I'm and just going to note that this is the. This is the second go round for these projects, and we don't have any maps, we don't have any representation. I think this failed for lack of understanding. I'm hopeful that it failed last time for lack of understanding, and not because people just don't believe that we need the improvements. I think it's apparent that we do. And I hope that the town is prepared to do a better job at explaining what these projects are. I second that. <laughs> This is basically the, the one article that's been broken into two, right? Been broken into two. But to, to Stephen's point, there was a lot, of a lot of confusion around what this was going to look like and whether people could make a left-hand turn um, or the right-hand turn and whether there would be jersey barriers and uh, all of these things that came up that were just seemingly... I mean, there's, there's no maps referenced. Right. There needs to be a PR campaign to explain what this is. Are and there, what it's going to look like. Are these numbers higher or lower in the area than the last time we looked at this? I think we looked at it at $15 million. So we did well. So we saved two? <laughs> well, maybe. I'm not I sure mean, it's we all. We have no way of knowing if I'm there's not a sure rotary that's missing yeah, from I this. Think or, there's a, I, mean, I think there's some stuff missing. Yeah. So can we have, can somebody come and explain this to us? That'd be great. Mike came to Capcom. And? And provided us the data. And I, I actually was the one that made a motion to approve. Unfortunately, I didn't bring my glasses and I can't see. <laughs> what you approve? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, this is all just very, very general, right. boilerplate, maybe bond council language. Yeah. It is bond council language, <laughs> <laughs> through and through. Yeah. Of professional it's simply, services for yeah. design, permitting, engineering, construction, construction, and on and on. But it doesn't say where and what and when and all the stuff that voters are going to want to know. I agree. And I think that the, I mean, the plan is to undertake the same to very soon to start the process of um, enlightening everybody about what the changes are with maps and, and all of that information. It's not something I think that um, isn't going to be done. I think it's in the process of being developed on, on all of that. I mean, don't forget the other thing too is that this is a, these are two part questions again. So town meeting will authorize the town to borrow the money and, and do it. They're both contingent on debt exclusions passing at the November ballot. So nothing can proceed until that hurdle is cleared as well. But I do believe the plan is to. Okay. You know, but your that. your capital committee voted to. Yeah, we had a whole. Mike, Mike Burns came in. At, we had a whole session. It was a whole almost an hour and a half on just this corridor, uh, and we had 
probably too many maps, which is not bad for those who love maps. <laughs> <laughs> and and it, it made sense from my perspective, and I'm just speaking for one, but we, we did make a motion in a second to approve that we go forward with the full project. So we have the ability to take maps like these and superimpose them on our GIS? IT may, I'd have to ask. I would think that they're probably I, derived from. Yeah, I, I would mean, imagine they're coming you, from. If you could go in and see, like, yeah. what does Article 66 do? You know, and it changes zoning for when it's zoning, or if it's a rotary in a new place, yeah. that's the best thing. You know, that would be handy, I think, for people who don't want to wait through these meetings. I thought, yeah, yeah, yeah. And like these guys who love the meetings. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, it's, um, so bear in mind that. Um, Capcom is approved. We'll try to get Burns in here to give a not an hour and a half presentation. Just one of the missing yeah. from the first go round. I think that would be important. Uh, Force main design and engineering article eight. That was also at Capcom. But my comment was that we we need to know what happened before in order to use that as a starting point for the for the fix. So it's not just the route, it's try to avoid what happened once we know what happened. So it sounds like we've reached that point. So I'd be ready to make a motion that uh, we accept the motion as, as written. A second. Any discussion? No. Nope. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. How do we ensure or, or, or does a, uh, a contractor have to bond these big sewer projects? I mean, they're 30 years or something, so I mean, it's kind of hard to bond something for 30 years, right? I mean, usually you have a bond, like you build a road, you bond for five years. Like when they build a project, you now the seams blew up. Who, who's paying for that? I mean, these guys disappeared into the sunset? Or? Well, I mean, there's statutorily under the law, there's only a certain amount of time that we can hold them liable for after after it and 30 years is well outside of the <laughs> statutory limit that we can and I also think if I'm not mistaken that this company is actually not even in business any longer I believe that they were on the big dig awesome and no longer happy to actually even, no longer exist if it's 30 years old happy to actually even tell if it was a bad weld or a bad scene can you the forensic analysis is that five blue light I had no idea what they could do. It's have <laughs> amazing, amazing stuff. Yeah, really. Yep. They could tell the temperature. I, 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 reading the report is fascinating. They knew what I ate the day before. <laughs> Only kidding. They found it in the sewer. Yeah, they did. Yeah, right. <laughs> well, I know. Uh, uh, what do you mean? What are you doing? We know what's coming. <laughs> <laughs> the, um, alarm, the alarm goes off when you. Uh, Sorry. Art, article 9, cover the, um, the cost overrun on C Street. I also make a motion to uh, approve our so motion as written. Uh, discussion? Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Thank you. You guys will all be invited to the ribbon cutting. <laughs> it's it's uh, quite a project. It's right. Seriously. You the ribbon cutting. You've, um, you've been a good neighbor. Yeah, Article 10, we're going to wait. We have to wait to see what the yeah. number is. Yes, okay. that's correct. Uh, Article 11, the uh, taxiway echo. I make a motion to approve the Finance Committee's motion as written. Okay, and this went to Capcom? Yep. Yeah. Okay. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Uh, 12, the security project. I also make a motion to recommend the Finance Committee motion as written. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thank you. 13, it's the uh, $19,000 transfer. I think we have to try and bring us more detail on this <laughs> <laughs> You know, you're absolutely right, John. <laughs> <laughs> Motion to adopt. Second. Discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Uh, Article 14. I'd ask that we hold, Mr. Chairman, just to wait until um, town council has oh, given okay. us an opinion that the article is drafted correctly. Okay. And then um, 
from that, we'll be able to insert the table for Article 15 for the meeting on the Fine. 6th. All right. Okay. Thank you. Great. And we're not going to do anything on 16, so uh, we'll good. And we'll, um, in the office, we'll put together a little chart with all 16 articles and okay. when they were approved and adopted and what's outstanding just so that everybody has that. So we're going to finish on the 6th, so once that meeting takes place, we're done, I, unless there's until, until the meeting. Yeah, until, we're not gonna, until the 10th, that's correct. Yeah. Um, so, uh, any committee reports? Anything, how far along are you on Capcom? We had our first session today where we're filling out our forms with solid waste, and our calendar is pretty much full for the next, gosh, through Two December. Months. Three months. So, we, we definitely have a head start. We weren't even started last year at this time. Mm -hmm. So, and I think um, we're on schedule to get the capital stuff to in December. Yes. Not the day before it. Yeah. No. yeah. So, uh, <coughs> which would be greatly appreciated. Any other committees people are serving on? I think we tapped Denise to get on all the social service committees. So, um, so any uh, any other business? Okay. I have a motion to adjourn. <laughs>